Hey, greetings everybody. Gleekon here again with another episode of Lore of Warcraft coming at you. Um, this is just a little short itty bitty one we'll bust out right now. Uh, if you're curious at all, we have about 25 or so um, little mini episodes, chapters, whatever you want to call them, left in Chronicles 1. And then it's somewhere in the 80 to 90 range um, of Chronicle 2 before we... Where, where they set up and establish what the Horde is, and then we'll start on that. So um, I'm still holding that I'm hoping I can be done with this and on to the Rise of the Horde, no Horde novel <laughs> um, within about a week, give or take, most likely give. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping within about two weeks we can be... Now, The Last Guardian, that's going to be tricky because... Um, we're probably gonna have to release some of that before we start the the Great War because that that takes place all throughout the first war, um, and I do think it looks forward into the second war. So I'm not sure if we're gonna uh, how we'll how we'll do that. Okay, well, really quick one on this one. Here we go. Uh, stay a while and listen, or stay just a tiny bit and listen to the long vigil. This is 7,300 years before the Dark Portal, so not that much longer from where we left off last time. Uh, maybe 100, 100 or so years, a little bit more. Um, let's see what this is. The exile of the Highborn ended a tenuous chapter in Night Elf history, yet even so, Tyrande and Malfurion found no time to rest. Malfurion and the Cenarian Circle busied themselves with upholding the balance of nature and healing lands still polluted with demonic corruption. Much of this they did in unison with Isera and her green dragonflight deep within the twisting pathways of the Emerald Dream. Malfurion and the other druids slumbered for decades at a time, their dream forms wandering Isera's realm. Okay, so it would be hard to have a relationship with him if for decades at a time he's sleeping and, and ex inhabiting the Emerald Dream, even if what he's doing is important. Taronda, Shandris, and the Sentinels maintained their guardianship over the Night Elf domain. They patrolled the forests without rest, ever wary of another demonic resurgence. Their efforts resulted in a long-sought period of peace and tranquility. Life in the forests and thickets of Hyjal thrived. In time, the enchanted keepers of the grove and woodland dryads emerged from the secluded Moonglade. Okay, so if you think about this, right to the north of Mount Hyjal is the Moonglade. Right to the south is Ashenvale. So we have where they've spread out to Ashenvale, and they're making that a, an extension of their um, realm. And the druids are, are inhabiting the Moonglade area to the north. Um, the Night Elves revered these creatures, for they were Cenarius' own sons and daughters. So I think we're talking about the Treants here, as well as the Dryads. Though. They already made an appearance in the War of the Ancients, but here they are officially appearing in, in the Chronicles. Their presence in the wilds of Ashenvale was seen as an omen of better times to come. Along with the Keepers of the Grove and the Dryads, other creatures appeared in the open with greater frequency. The wise Treants the elusive fairy dragons, and the mythical chimeras all began roaming the forests near night elf holdings. Okay, so the, the keepers of the grove maybe are something different than just treants. Maybe those are the big ones, I think, those really mega treants. And um, the chimeras, I didn't realize they were mythical because they're pretty commonplace um, in Azeroth now. Um, just off the top of my head, in Azara, they're... There are chimeras as just a mob around there. In the centuries to come, the Night Elves would foster strong bonds with these fey creatures and call on them in times of need. I can't think of a good chimera, though, so. With Malfurion in the dream, the task of governing the daily activities of the Night Elves fell to Tyrande. The mantle of leadership was demanding, but she enjoyed it. Yet despite the hope and optimism that blossomed among the Night Elves, Tyrande could not shake the feeling that dire times were ahead. They had banished the burning, burning Legion, but they had not killed Sargeras. Tyrande believed with all her heart that the fallen Titan was somewhere out in the darkness between the stars plotting another attack. And he was, and in that sense, she actually agrees with Illidan. Perhaps it was only a matter of time before Sargeras renewed his burning crusade to decimate all life. And if that day did come, Tyrande hoped she and her people would be ready for it. And if you think about it, um, all of these things that occur... Are just a manifestation of that the dark portal it, i believe when the orcs come through uh you with gul'dan and everything 
the corruption of um, Egwin or Egwin and and uh, Medivh. I believe that's all Sargeras as well. So these are all just various plots. So th that's the long vigil, I guess. The long vigil is just this time of peace that is going to probably jump us forward some years in uh, where the Night Elves kind of established who they are now, built that, item, that empire that they have now. All right, thanks for listening, guys. Another episode in the pipe, 5x5. I greatly, greatly appreciate your time, as always.